Well, welcome to the messy part of our yard. And uh, it's three degrees outside today, so it means shoes are in order. I'm going to work on this diesel heater. This is a diesel heater I bought some time ago with a view to testing it and mucking around with it until it stopped working. It eventually stopped working, and since then it's kind of sat out in the weather. Being as it's three degrees and the family is complaining about things being cold, I'm going to see if I can make it work again. But uh, a lot of people got angry with the first video I did with this. I titled the video, Learning About Diesel Heaters the Hard Way. The link is in the description below. I disabled comments on that video because so many people came to a video titled, Learning About Things the Hard Way, and expected me to be an expert, and I'm not. I bought one of these, didn't know what I was doing, didn't know how they worked, and I found out a bunch of things by trial and error. Sometimes that's how I do stuff. I'm not an expert on everything. I just have so many things to fix. So um, today I ran this to destruction until the bearings failed and it threw an error. I'm going to pull the motor out and see how badly the bearings are knackered and see if I can fix it. Otherwise I'll just buy another one. This was not expensive. It was about 130 Australian all up. And I've run it without the intake filter because screw that. And originally I got them wrong and I got the intake filter on the outlet and it melted and I got a new one and I haven't used it. Anyway, somebody complained I think in one of the comments that it's now disabled um, that I should have had an inkling when one fitting would, was too tight to fit on the other hole. The casting on this thing is so bad that both fittings were equally difficult to get on there. Anyway, I'm not sure what state this is in. I'm going to get the cover off and uh, pull out the main unit. Now, one of the main complaints I have about these units is that uh, the way the exhaust is designed to work on these, it's facing straight down. And unless you put like a chunk of wood or something under them, uh, they like to melt everything underneath them. Something I found about with the uh, floor in the ambulance the hard way. I think I'm just going to leave these off for now. We'll work that out later. Now, can we... It is cold enough that my already problematic fingers basically can't tell what I'm touching. So I'm using a bit of wire. Alright, so the primary concern I've got is the diesel tank, which is full of last season's diesel. Uh, if I do it this way, I might be able to pull this silicon hose off. Right, that was easier than I expected. Right, most of this isn't really bolted together, it's all just slotted together. Flimsy design, but I guess it was cheap. Yeah, we are making some headway here. We'll get the exhaust off. And there's a string clip to hold that hose on. I think we'll pull the hose off at the top. Okay, to get to those four screws, I had to remove the base I put on. Which I'm using a, a cheetah tool today. It's less than ideal workspace out here, but we deal with what we've got. It is free, except for that pipe. And the way that's threaded, I think I'm just going to grab this with my fingers, being as I can't feel them. Although I really should use a pair of pliers, I'll hurt my fingers. Okay, let's get this little spring clip here. Move you off that pipe. These pliers are frozen. Right. Making them hard to move. Alright, we got it. Okay, should. Good luck. Mostly just lift out of here. Alright, and we've got a hibernating snail here as well, you can go. Alright, we're back at the desk inside, and uh, we're going to get a workshop rag here, and some spray and wipe, give this a general clean up, just so I'm not spreading detritus all over my desk. Start stripping the external fixtures off this, there's probably going to be spiders and stuff in there, a bearing Seems okay, it's a little noisy, but otherwise seems alright. We'll pull it out and find out. Um, but yeah, now we have to find screw holes. Tell me, are these just 
Do these just clip together? I think it does. There we go. All right. That would make sense. So, what we're after, I am pretty sure the error it's throwing is this motor here. It was making some horrible noises before it stopped. Um, so that is probably what we want to get out. This will be glow plug um, and combustion chamber. If I'm lucky, I can pull the motor out without taking the combustion chamber apart. But I don't think I'm going to be that lucky. Alright, so as it turns out, the plastic casing is not bolted on at all. So uh, you just wriggle it loose and out it comes. Less the little rubber gasket you had to take off there. That's our electronic module. Well, I guess we're going to have to move that because we're going to need to take this off. I've heard these things, the glow plugs do die in them too. And there's another, I think that's a temp sensor there. And there's a spring clip. There's a bunch of stuff going on here. We're going to grab a hex bit and pull this off. There is a locator pin of some kind in there. Ah, and there's a couple of steps. Let's see. Alright, we worked it out. It was a lot simpler than I expected. Alright, we have a little PTC um, fuse there. Now what I wanted to get to primarily was this motor section. So I can hook some power directly up to this motor and see how it sounds. And see if that's likely our problem. Huge wires. And we will probably need a different set of test leads here. We will try pushing that into the pin here. See if we get 12 volts onto it. Well, that is some noisy fan bearings. They certainly need to be replaced. But I suspect there might be a bigger problem that's causing this. It might be the glow plug. Now we can see from here we're pulling about four and a half amps, which is probably a bit more than it's supposed to pull. So that could be our issue. Alright, next thing I want to do is check for some resistance across the uh, glow plug. I'm going to go 200 ohm. I'm going to guess it's not going to be a huge amount of resistance in this. So we are... Let's go up our range here. So 200 ohm mark, it says, oh, no resistance checked, or no resistance seen. So that could be a blown glow plug. Let's have a look. 200k, 2000k, I'm not reading anything on that glow plug. Glow plug might be our issue. We still don't need to change the bearings in that, but um, yeah, it could be that I have to order a new glow plug. Right, so I had another look at the glow plug here, and it did actually get a reading on it. Apparently there's a polarity that makes a difference to this. But I read about 100 ohms, I think. I'm not sure what it should actually be. Um, I'm looking at another video here by a bloke called About a Van, and he's reading, he had a glow plug error and it read 150 uh, ohms. This is reading about 50 ohm So I'd say that's about right. It is a bit all over the place because these probes are a bit wonky But I think the glow plug might be okay. I'll have to see what the specs on them should be All right after doing a bit of research the resistance on this should be between 1 and 6 ohms that would make a lot of sense So uh, I think we're going to rip this out and uh, see if we can find another one In the meantime, we might pull this out and see if we can find the bearings as well I don't think I'm going to find a glow plug for this around town, so I might end up having to uh, order one in, in which case it's going to take a little while. So, uh, we'll see what we can do. Alright, well if the glow plug wasn't busted before, it, is, it definitely is now. I um, busted this terminal off. These are fragile and I knew that, but I thought I'd get lazy and pull it out. Uh, the risk being, you know, it's already buggered. So I'm going to take a, uh, what's this one? What size have we got here? 12 mil. 12 mil socket and wrong ratchet. Bigger ratchet. These are so cold. They've been outside. So really what you'd want to do with these is 
under sole of the leads and then remove it would be the correct way to do it but I'm a bit haphazard because it was already buggered anyway so yep this is our glow plug so I'm gonna see if I can find one like this locally all right so I did some ringing around my local repco might have one and they said bring it in and we'll have a look and see what they've got in the meantime I'm gonna pull the motor out and pop the bearings out of that getting the motor out is gonna be a little more difficult there we go here. Well these screws went in very tight but I guess you probably wouldn't want to with the level of thermal expansion that this experiences. All right so there is a gasket in here and when we put this back together we'll probably be using uh, RT high temperature RTV. This could be a challenge to separate or it could be just as easy as that. Well, it looks pretty clean in there. There's not much debris in there. We will uh, give that a clean out anyway. But for now, we've got our motor. Yeah, that's fun. That is... That's ceramic. I was going to say that feels plastic. But that could be ceramic. That could be a challenge to remove that. Um, I'd much rather look at this plastic impeller with a little... Oh, it's got a, got a couple of magnets here for speed sensing but no speed sensor apparently. That's interesting, they might be just balance weights. That is a uh, quite a um, noisy fan. So uh, yeah, and that gasket's a little bit damaged from separating, we will use some RTV on that. All right, so I've given this some thought. I was going to stick this in the vise and I actually went out the shed and looked this up. Um, this little piece here is gonna get in the way and I was going to use a pin punch to try and push this shaft out and pull this piece off. This being the plastic one. But the idea that maybe I can get the motor out through that direction, which we can't, because it's screwed in and the screws are covered by this ceramic impeller here. This ceramic one, I don't want to put force or shock on because they can bust. It's been press fit with a special tool. I am almost entirely certain of that that could break and if that breaks the whole thing is pretty much useless so throw it out um the noisy bearing is this one here and if i took this off the only one i could really change is that one the uh i could conceivably get access to that end bearing without removing it but that's not the one i need to fix is this one and it sounds very dry i think what i'm going to do is try and get some oil into that bearing as best i can give it a little bit more life and hopefully this will work for a little bit long or a little bit longer enough that I can get another one in. Right, we had an instant change of sound. I went in through the little gap on the intake on the impeller in here. So I'd say the diesel going through this probably does help lubricate that. But this is the combustion chamber side. Still doesn't sound great but it's better than it was given the expected lifespan of this thing we're just going to put this back together mostly and uh let it self-destruct i guess we won't be running it anywhere near inside all right so as expected living rural has its drawbacks nobody can get these in fact <laughs> the guys at repco went that's the smallest thing i've ever seen so uh yeah we'll work it out anyway um I think I'm going to button this up, do some homework. We might just get a whole new unit. It might be quicker to find than a glow plug. Ironic, but it's common with stuff made in China. So, uh, yeah. And if I find a glow plug, we'll put that in. But I can't find anything locally or within a few days transfer. So I want to get this video done and out. So uh, we're going to call this diagnosing a problem with the, uh, with the diesel heater. And uh, we'll continue on and see what else we can do anyway i hope you learned something at least i did anyway see you later